Hello everyone, Kenty Tiger here with Bengali Engineering and Play. We are back in Space Engineers. We are continuing on in our Module Utility Vessel. That's what I'm going to go ahead and call this, Modular Utility Vessel. Um, so this is, I, I, I want to call it a tutorial because we are building something. I'm going really slow. I'm babbling at, at length uh, as I'm putting everything together. Um, so hopefully uh, for those of you experienced uh, space engineers out there are probably not going to find this terribly useful other than, hey, it's creative, it's something, right? Um, but uh, not necessarily anything earth shattering as far as, you know, design methodology or anything like that. So uh, just kind of the fun stuff, but, uh, you know, working how to do it. So uh, am I doing this ass backwards by, you know, designing, developing a module prior to the actual thing that moves the module? Um, I, I guess that's really kind of a matter of opinion. Uh, to me, what's the module that it's going to be carrying, and then I build the tractor that's going to actually be able to move and carry that thing around. Um, so... I, I suppose there's some argument in either direction. So I tend to do it a little bit backwards. I tend to build my transport mechanism uh, around what I am transporting. Uh, so in this case, because it's modular design, then I need the modules uh, to be done uh, before uh, I know what is going to actually move these guys around. So. Uh, Maybe that's not the most appropriate methodology ever, uh, but hmm, anyway. All right, um, power. Um, <coughs> it, it's kind of uh, hard to say uh, exactly how um, it, is a merge block better? Uh, is it worse? Um, you know, how to, why, why am I thinking that a connector here is, is better or worse? Um, a merge block uh, would be fine, but I would have to build a meth methodology here. So this is a, obviously it's an open surface, uh, but it is, I believe, we can try that, yeah. So I can actually attach something on there. So it is an attachable surface. It is a mergeable surface. So if I put something on here with a merge block and it has a mergeable surface, it will become merged. So um, even if I let loose the merge blocks, if I have a mergeable surface that has merged, it is now merged. So the, the uh, merge blocks now are, are pointless, they're useless. So I would have to design the mechanism in so I keep no mergeable surfaces uh, close. Uh, and I, I just think a connector in this case uh, makes things a lot easier um, to make everything happen. Now that may prove to not be true. Um, I know that you can access jump drives via connectors so I'm hoping that uh, connectors will be the wise choice here. Otherwise, we're going to have to backpedal and probably start all over again. Now, uh, I was talking about these things as being something that you could drop from orbit and have kind of a base in a box, uh, shake and bake colony kind of a thing. Um, so how would we go about doing that? So I put two parachutes on here. So parachutes are now part of the vanilla game. So this is not a special mod that I've loaded in here. We're starting to run low on power. Um, so maybe, maybe we'll, let's, let's get charged up here just, just for fun as we're babbling here. This should, won't take very long. One of the things you notice here, if you're looking at the screens, the ingots here, I, I've got a just a boatload of ingots. Um, you know, in the case of silver, I've got 205 million ingots. 
Uh, do you really need that many? Oh, well, if we really go into it, I've got nickel and iron up there uh, in the, you know, 809 million ingots and, and iron ingots. So what I'm not sure, and in fact, I don't think they are actually here, is I have these configured incorrectly. So yes, I, I know and I, I apologize that I'm going off on another tangent here, but um, M Masters um, M Masters uh, automatic LCDs is is infinitely flexible. So you put in a series of commands, um, and it will do amazing things. So this is. I don't want to call it a simple command, but once you know what it is that you're after, um, it's really easy to put these commands together. So inventory. What is inventory? Inventory is inventory, right? So obviously it's a list of something that is inside your cargo containers. Uh, what does that T colon star mean? Well, the star is a wild card. For anybody who's done any programming at all, you know star is a wild card. Um, so T colon uh, within M master script here means just this grid. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I want to tell it to show me the inventory of just what's on this grid. In this case, this grid is the miner itself. Okay, so I don't want to look outside of that. Uh, inventory is associated with cargo blocks, so any cargo containers that I have. Uh, so that's what that star is. You can actually specify a lot of different things. There's a lot of flexibility there, and I won't go into, into detail because this isn't about this mod. Um, and then what do I want to show in this inventory? So it's my ingots, and it's a list uh, of ingot types because I'm not specifying a single ingot. I'm specifying all ingots, and I want to list in um, so a million is, uh, and when I get back to the other screen, I'll show you what that million actually means. Okay, so T, uh, and hopefully, if I'm correct here, we're going to see a pretty large scale change in this display. Uh, at least I hope we will. Yes, we did. Okay, so if you notice, the, the display here went to zeros. Um, so all of my ingot summary has gone to zero. Now if you notice that little dot 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 thing between the brackets there that's underneath the, for example, the gravel uh, is there to the left, the zero one M is one million because that's what I've specified and plus zero ore. So this particular ingots summary page actually shows you the amount of ore numerically that you have as well as the actual ingots and then that dot dot bar between the uh, the brackets there um, brackets brackets braces brackets um, brackets are square braces are not square um, that is the percentage of your one million okay so you notice those were all uh, upright if you look at the very bottom there it's kind of hard to see let me turn my off there you can see the uranium one um, so the uranium is what's in in stock. That's what I have on board here. Um, so <coughs> in this case, that's what that bar would look like. So one million is from left to right. I have 7.8 million, so obviously I'm all the way to the right. Uh, so any scalar between one uh, or between zero and one million uh, is going to show up on that bar. Anything over a million in that bar is just pegged. So it's just a meter. Um, so you can see over there on the power status side on the right, there's the batteries stored. So six megawatt hours is my maximum. Uh, and I have currently stored 4.1 megawatt hours. So you see that the, the scale there going across is about two thirds of the way across. Almost exactly two thirds, 68%. So obviously, for those of you who are not math challenged, uh, one third would be exactly 66.7% or 67, as the case may be, rounded up. Um, so anyway, uh, infinite flexibility there. So what I wanted to do is just go back through and make sure that I did did uh, that I didn't have this misprogrammed, which I did, obviously. So 
all of that storage stuff that you saw just disappear is because it's actually in the base module that I'm parked on. So that's what that was all about. Okay, so now uh, clearly I have that. I uh, have all my uh, power back up to where it should be. My tab back on here so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so um, I am thinking I, I tend to over engineer everything. So, for those of you who have watched some of my videos in the past, you know I over engineer everything. So, um, one module has batteries on it, this one does not yet have batteries. So, what I want to do is actually put um, uh, a gotta get to the point where I can actually see the thing. Alright, so I'm going to put a reactor underneath the um, uh, the parachute on this side. So there's uh, one reactor there and just because uh, I'm going to go ahead and put one uh, here. Oops, let me do that. Pink. That's there. So this one has two reactors. Um, whether we call that a backup and a and a uh, backup and and primary, however you want to look at it, we're going to put uh, two on each one. So obviously the connected ship will be able to uh, draw from this as well. Just making sure I have that was spun around the right way. And uh, what do we put on the bottom here? Um, now I have a beacon over here. So what I think I will do over here, just to again keep things symmetrical, uh, is put a battery and a battery. So battery and battery, which will actually power this particular one. So that is the symmetrical side uh, to, or asymmetrical, if you will, uh, as in reversed symmetry um, from the other side. So we have a beacon on one side and battery on the other side. Obviously with the jump drive there, uh, with a bunch of batteries in between, uh, we have a bunch more. All right, so uh, uranium. Uh, hopefully we have some uranium in here. I don't know if I actually do. Let me see if I can punch the right button. Small ship reactor. All right, so um, let us take uh, 400, 400 K. So we'll put a hundred thousand in each one of these reactors. Um, oh, and the only way I'm going to get into that is to get through a connector. Um, so we have all the batteries, we have the connectors which we can, uh, you know, one side or the other. I'm not going to rename these, obviously the owner is nobody right now, I'm not going to rename those uh, just yet. Um, so inventory, um, we want to show our reactors, we have two small reactors, we're going to do uh, 100,000, oh not 10, let's try that again. Uh, 100,000, 100, oh, drew that, can't get to this side, inventory, uh, reactor, uh, 100,000, and we will do the exact same thing over here because I have battery power 
then I will be able to use uh, all the different um, reactor and we're going to put and drag that over. All right. So those guys are actually, um, because the batteries are not set to anything, um, then the batteries are now charging. Uh, so we will burn through um, that mass. Oh, yeah, okay, I, I do see we're burning, burning through uh, uranium pretty quickly. Um, so the beacon is on even though it doesn't necessarily need to be on um, all right so uh, jump drive is fully charged which is a good thing uh, and then we have to decide what else are we doing with um, with these modules um, There's part of me that wants to put landing gear here, one on each end, and do like an auto land. Or if I were being a little more practical, what do I need as far as modules go um, for flexibility? Do I need uh, oxygen generator? Do I need a uh, you know? Do I want to put an assembler on here? You know, what what do I really want to do as far as the flexibility of this module? Um, obviously it was intended as a transport module uh, so cargo do I really want the flexibility there obviously I've got power on here do I really need anything more than power what do I want to do ultimately um, as far as you know functionality and necessity do I just put more batteries on it can we have enough batteries I don't think we can ever have enough batteries uh, you know power storage is is a you know magnificent thing um, so, um, I, my inclination would be to put batteries down here in this last, uh, this third row. Um, you can't really ever go wrong with batteries. Um, we have infinite flexibility. Do I really want something that has an assembler on it? That sort of thing. It, it would be convenient, but also kind of a waste if we think about things in terms of well this is a cargo thing so if I'm just using it for cargo then that's kind of a waste uh, and I guess the same thing could be argued with batteries um, but um, you know refinery what what do we have uh, maybe um, how about um, we put a gyro here uh, we can never have enough gyro this would keep it stable, uh, or so I would think, uh, but would also aid uh, as far as, um, hmm, how can we do that a little easier? Um, I was going to say we could also aid, but we've got the parachutes there so the parachutes are going to slow that down to I think it's a two meters per second which can drop things in really really slowly um, so I was thinking the extra gyro would give you uh, added maneuverability and capability if it came to this being loaded pretty heavy so that could be uh, advantageous um, do I want some kind of um, thrusters on here um, and of course the problem with thrusters is now I'm below the bottom so is that a good idea is it not a good idea um, so but again we're back to this argument of what is practical versus anything else and as long as this is you know transporting then having an extra gyro there might be a good idea if it's being dropped down to the surface then maybe it's not a good idea um, so I don't know. I, I was thinking battery uh, and, uh, or rather, uh, two batteries and a gyro. Um, yep, yeah, I think we'll do that. Uh, and battery, uh, battery. 
and then we go to the other end and do the exact same thing battery and battery so there's a battery there's a battery and a six is a gyro gyro all right so this seems to be our modules um, Nope, let me do the same thing here on this one. So, uh, six module uh, gyro battery battery. And because I'm OCD, uh, I want to uh, configure everything in here. Um, so this, um, the first thing I'm going to do, I think I have everything on here that needs to be on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is say me, uh, and it is shared with the faction. Uh, once you rename that and claim that as yours, then you can actually rename this to something else. Um, so this is going to be um, ATC jump. Okay, so this is called the modular utility vessel. Uh, modular utility vessel move um, jump module. Move jump module. Um, it is a ship, so I don't want to convert it to a station. Uh, it is currently 200,000 something kilograms. Don't know. Um, control panel. Um, battery. So this is battery one. Uh, I want to highlight all my batteries and call them batteries. Save. Uh, we're going to put those into a recharge mode and there are people who argue that semi-auto is good and some that argue that semi-auto is bad. Um, I, I don't really... I tend to set them to recharge so they go all the way up and then semi-auto. Um, if you don't run in semi-auto mode. So if you remove semi-auto and you remove recharge, then if there's power available, these are going to charge all the way up. So for example, let me pull up one of the batteries. So right now with power available, now of course there's, there's more batteries than are available. So maximum required input, current input is 195 watts, okay, which is not very, very, oh, sorry, current input is 20 megawatts, okay, which is the maximum amount that, that it needs. And in 19 minutes, that battery will be fully charged. Um, so when you are all blank, then this will charge all the way up and then start discharging, it reaches you know, like 1% discharge and charges back up. Um, if you do semi-auto, it will charge all the way down to, or all the way up to 100%, then discharge to zero and start recharging. So it will literally cycle through the entire 100% of the battery, um, which may or may not be good. So it, it's arguable in how you want that. Um, the argument with leaving all of these unchecked is really as long as you have power keep them charged um, so they will always stay charged if you have external power when your reactors run out of uranium then now you're on battery power and it will run all the way down but reasonably when your reactors run out of power your batteries are at very close to 100 um, so basically the batteries charge all the way up and stay there 
and then everything is powered off of the reactors um, or, or solar or whatever. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, um, the idea. Um, so uh, containers don't really have any need to, you know, have my name blossomed all over there. Um, so this is the middle. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and call this end aft. I, I don't have any reason. It's, it's completely arbitrary. Um, aft. So the reason I'm calling this aft, the only reason, in fact, I'm calling this aft, is um, because I want uh, arbitrarily the jump drive comes first, so it's forward. That, that there's no other reason uh, for that. Um, so here's uh, a little problem to consider is that, uh, and this is, most people won't have this problem, uh, is this the forward or the aft reactor? Okay, parachute hatch, same, same thing. Uh, how do you know? Uh, unless you remember exactly gyro, uh, unless you remember exactly, you know, how you put everything in. Um, then uh, you are not going to be able to name this connectors. Uh, so batteries. Uh, I'm going to turn these off. I don't need them on the toolbar. No reason to have them on the toolbar. Um, my group is on the toolbar. So that's all that I need on the toolbar. Uh, and do not show them in the terminal. So I get rid of all this extra superfluous gibberish. Um, beacon. Uh, what is this? Well, this is the KTC uh, MUV. Uh, jump module. Okay, so that's the that's the information my beacon is putting out. I can run that all the way out to 50,000 meters, uh, so 50 kilometers, and that uses about 10k. If I were to put an antenna on here running at 50,000 uh, meters, uh, that would be 200 kilowatts. Um, so to give you an idea of the beacon versus the antenna. Uh, on the flip side, um, I am going to put an antenna. It's going to be entirely temporary, um, but I need an antenna. So let me go out to number eight. Uh, I'm going to put the antenna here. I do not need any more beacons. I don't think I need any more parachutes, but yeah, let's leave the parachutes there because I think I'm going to put parachutes uh, on the... Uh, Um, on the tractor itself. Okay, so why do I need an antenna on there? Let me get the antenna on here, and no, it doesn't matter which direction it is. So um, the antennas are temporary. They're going to come off. The reason I put the antennas on is because... Oops, can't, can't do that. Oh. Let me uh, go in here. This is just a connection point. Um, so, uh, jump drive. But all of my hatches I'm going to show on HUD. Remember that to use the show on HUD what does it say here? You must have an active antenna connected. Must have antenna Oh, sorry. Let me try that again. You must have active antenna connected. Um, so normally that would be an an active antenna if I were going total Oxford English grammar. Um, but I need an antenna. A beacon is not an antenna. A beacon is a beacon. So antenna. They serve different functions. You can transmit data with the antenna. You cannot transmit data with the beacon. So I have to have an antenna on here to use the HUD functionality. And what am I doing here? So this is a little hard to see because I run UHD. So this is my small reactor two is my aft reactor and my parachute hatch with no number is my aft parachute hatch. All right, so two and none. So let me go in here, parachute hatch, none, parachute hatch is now aft, right? Which means that one's forward, forward. Uh, reactor 2 
again small reactor now with the reactors you can see the type is Kenti small reactor okay and this is the aft reactor which means this is the forward reactor now if I were really intelligent here I would call this small forward because if the ship has a large reactor then these will all show up alphabetically uh, so this is now the small aft uh, I didn't specifically look at the gyros so we need to do that so this connector here which for whatever reason is not showing up uh, Kenti gyro 2 so that's my aft gyro uh, so gyro 2 we're just gonna call that gyro aft uh, as you can see uh, Kenti gyro is the type uh, so obviously this gyro is the forward gyro forward and uh, I'm going to create a group called gyros which is going to hold those so I'm going to take that off the toolbar I do not need those on the toolbar anymore I do not need them on the HUD anymore because they are uh, already named I've got the group I can see that uh, so I'm going to turn them off in the terminal okay reactors uh, I named my reactors so I'm going to have a group called reactors small save uh, I do not need the HUD on I do not need those in the toolbar config I do want them on my inventory and I do not need them on my block inventory um, containers and parachutes so parachutes um, I'm going to turn them off on the HUD I do not need them on the toolbar I do need them on the inventory screen so I can reload them and then turn them off alright so connectors I did not show the connectors on the HUD but I am going to do that now that way I can actually see which connector is what this is connector 2 which means the other end is connector 1 so this is connector 2 aft forward uh, I'm going to create connectors uh, and save now I do want this on the toolbar uh, the reason why I want this on the toolbar is on the tractor I might disconnect these um, you know what um, I take that back let me rethink this through I'm gonna change the name of that group because I want this to be the module connectors not the connectors on the tractor and these will always function as a group so I will turn these on and off together in fact I'll probably never turn these guys off I will disconnect from the tractor side uh, but so this is um, so I really should say uh, jump uh, module jump module uh, and this is connectors jump module okay so we have the group I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of the connectors group now so jump module so these are going to work together uh, so if I ever turn them off I can turn them off as the group and use this okay so tr I've turned them off on the HUD now I no longer need those because those are always going to be working as a pair uh, I do need the inventory screen in case things get stuffed in there it is a cargo capable block so things if you fill things up they will go in there uh, and I'm gonna turn those off I do not need them on the terminal 
All right, so here's what we have. We have the containers. Do I really need to list the containers independently? Not really. So let's go ahead and create a containers group. Uh, I do not need them on the toolbar independently. I do need the inventory screen because obviously I want to move things in and out of them and I want to turn them off on the terminal. I do not need to see those. All right, so what do we have left here? We have all of our groups. We have an antenna, which is going to disappear. We have a jump drive, which is ultimately going to disappear, and then a beacon. So that's a beacon. Okay. So uh, my jump drive is always going to be there, uh, and my antenna I can actually get rid of because I have no need for it anymore. Uh, so in this case, uh, pink. Space Master obviously is on, if you didn't guess that. All right, so this module is pretty much set. Uh, obviously, it's not armored. If I were to do any kind of armor or anything on there, then I'm going to change its dynamics. Do I want it to be bigger? Uh, don't know. You know, that's kind of one of those uh, one of those strange things that you kind of have to decide what you uh, what you want to do here. All right, so we're going to do the same thing here. Um, the first thing we're going to do, the very, very same methodology here, we're going to select everything and me. Uh, yes, and that's going to share with faction. I have my batteries. What am I going to do with my batteries? Again, we went through all the arguments of do you want them, do you not want them, how do you want to do them. Uh, so we're going to do batteries. Um, groups. Um, for those of you who don't know, if you have, uh, for example, the tractor, which then this module is going to hook into, if I have a batteries group on the tractor, and I have this that's named obviously batteries group, you're not going to see two groups when you have these merged. Okay, It's going to show you one group called batteries all of the batteries will be in that group until you separate again and then it will be the two independent groups again um, obviously because it's two separate grids <laughs> but um, the convenient thing is that if you have a group named batteries on this unit and it connects into this unit then uh, it's only going to be one group so if you intend to keep the different groups separate uh, and you had some reason to do that, make sure that you name these groups independently. Otherwise, they will merge and unmerge as these grids connect and disconnect. So we're going to do the same thing. We're not going to do recharge, discharge, or semi-auto. We're just going to let them charge all the way up and stay there. So I've got my batteries group, uh, all this stuff here. I do not need them on the toolbar. I'm only going to be working with these batteries uh, in terms of that group. So I'm going to turn the toolbar off and turn them off in the terminal. Boop. So they're all gone. Okay, my containers, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, so I do not have a need to have Kenti large container there. So this one's going to be the forward. How do I know that was forward? Because I started at that end. <laughs> okay, so my one, two, and three are uh, forward, mid, and aft, respectively. Mid. Does that really matter? No. Unless you're OCD, then it matters. Aft. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to create a group called containers. Save. Uh, I do not need those in the toolbar, so I'm going to turn them off in the toolbar. I do need the inventory screen, so we're going to keep that. Terminal, I'm going to turn that off because I have a group. All right. Beacon. Uh, we're going to change the name here. Uh, so this is KTC MUV, all right, modular utility vehicle, and this is the cargo module, all right. And then we're going to change that beacon out to 50k. All right. Um, having done that, we're going to go over to the info window here. We're going to change this name to the same thing, MUV. Cargo, Carbo, Cargo module. All right, and then OK. It's 
not a station, so it's already a ship. You can see where that is. That jump drive is pretty damn heavy, huh? Alright, control. Now, we have connectors, we have gyros, we have reactors, and parachute hatches. So I'm going to highlight all of those. I'm going to turn the HUD on so I can see everything. Remember the antenna is going away, so I'm not going to worry about any of that. Alright, so I see a connector back here. I see a gyro. Uh, I see a small reactor, and I see a parachute hatch 2. So in this case, everything back here, which has no numbers, is the number one. Because remember, it doesn't put a number on it if it's a number one, except for this one, which is a number two. So these are all aft. All right. So parachute hatch is the only one that's aft. So that one's aft. Uh, the reactor is an aft. Remember, small aft is how I named it on the other one. Okay, which means this is a small forward. Small forward. Uh, this is parachute hatch forward. Gyro. This was the forward gyro. Remember? Forward. Aft. Connector 2. This is forward. And remember, this is now our cargo module. Forward. This is our connector aft cargo module. Alright, so now we have everything named. Okay, so this is connectors cargo module. So that's my group. Uh, off in the toolbar because I will always be using these as a pair. It does have inventory capability, so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to turn them off. Gyro. We create our group called Gyros, which is going to be a global group. That's going to be also on the tractor. Uh, I can turn off the HUD. I forgot to do that on the other. Uh, nothing in the toolbar because I'm always going to be working with that as a group. And there, uh, cargo. I'm going to turn that off as the HUD. Okay, parachute hatches. Uh, remember, I called this parachutes. Save. Uh, off on the toolbar, because I don't really need that on the toolbar. I can work with that as a group. Uh, it does have inventory capability, so I can reload them uh, and turn them off in here. Okay. Uh, and finally, last but not least, reactors. Small. Okay, so that's going to be the same group as I identified in the other one. All right, reactor small, uh, toolbar, turn them off. I'm always going to be working with those as a group. Uh, they do have inventory. Obviously, I'm going to be moving stuff around. And show block in the terminal, turn that off. So we have the cargo module, which is my beacon. Uh-oh, beacon. Okay. Oh, sorry, that was the antenna. There's my beacon. I don't know how I clicked that. All right, and then I can get rid of that. All right, antenna, click, out of there. Okay, so my two modules are complete. Okay, so these are my two types of modules. Now we need to start figuring out how we're going to build a tractor to move these things. So what do I need on my tractor? So, uh, obviously, I'm going to need a cockpit. Duh. I need oxygen because presumably I'm going to be sitting in there or somebody's going to be sitting in there, right? So I need oxygen. Uh, I need hydrogen if I'm going to power this by hydrogen. Now, here's the catch. Um, hydrogen is good and bad. It's powerful. It is, in fact, the most powerful of the thrusters by a margin. Um, but remember that atmospheric thrusters are only going to work 
in an atmosphere and only up to six seven thousand meters uh, after which they're going to start very rapidly degrading uh, to the point where they're not going to function anymore uh, so pretty important uh, that you choose your thrusters according to the environment you're in ion thrusters great in space uh, but almost to the same proportion you get down into the you know 10 and 12,000 meters uh, you know into an atmosphere where you actually have an atmosphere and your ion thrusters uh, their capabilities drop off sharply uh, to the point where if you take a craft in via ion thrusters into a you know 0.9 uh, or 1.0 gravity uh, well uh, you're gonna crash big time so uh, don't do that lesson lesson to the wise don't do that so uh, atmospheric thrusters ion thrusters or hydrogen thrusters hydrogen thrusters marginally more powerful than either one of the other thrusters uh, and work I, I want to say equally well whether you are in an atmosphere or in space okay so these are the best all-around thrusters but with a very severe cost they burn through hydrogen like nobody's business okay so uh, what's the bottom line you need a pretty substantial production if you're going to land um, uh, probably if you think this through in terms of physics uh, it will make perfect sense when you are launching from the surface you're going to use a certain amount of hydrogen when you are coming in from the atmosphere uh, you're going to use a lot more hydrogen because you are burning uh, almost all the way down to keep yourself from reaching terminal velocity okay so you're gonna burn a shit ton of hydrogen to try and land with hydrogen okay so there are costs okay um, now is this going to be entirely vanilla uh, normally when I build stuff like this uh, it's supposed to be vanilla that way I can put it up on the website and you can use it for wherever you want to go uh, in my case here I've already screwed that up because all the batteries and the gyros on here are non vanilla they are Kenti Kenti batteries so um, I've already screwed this whole thing up from from the perspective of do I want to make this vanilla um, what I will probably end up doing uh, is build a vanilla version I really should have considered a vanilla version uh, when I was doing this and and then I could actually put these up on the uh, on the steam workshop um, but uh, what I will do over time and and this is more of an OCD thing I could at this point because the the stuff is fairly simple here I mean most of what's here uh, well okay I can't really say that because the, the containers are also empty containers so oops I've totally I've totally screwed this one up uh, so these are, are clearly not vanilla by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, well, there's vanilla connectors on there, and the parachutes are vanilla, and the, hey, the beacons are vanilla. Uh, so if you consider those three things, then I guess that's a little bit of vanilla. Uh, the rest of it is, is definitely Kenti flavored. <coughs> so um, if we watch our batteries here, you see they come off of 100% and go right back up to 100%. So as long as I have reactor power available, these guys are going to stay pretty darn close to 100%. It will stay that way until the reactor runs out of uranium, and then they will start on the battery. So there's some, there's some good things there. Okay. Um... Now that I have totally screwed the pooch on that one, then it is a matter of figuring out how we want to design and develop uh, our our tractor. I'm going to go similar 
in style uh, to the Space 1999 patented Eagle. Um, why? No reason. Uh, because. Um, so, what am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to use... Um, this thing. Um, now it is floating a little bit above this uh, thing and I'm using this more for measurement sake than anything else. Uh, I will probably change quite a bit here. Um, I'm going to use hydrogen thrust. Uh, I'm also going to use uh, Kenti hydrogen generators and Kenti hydrogen tanks uh, which will make this a much more compact design. Um, but let me build the basic frame. Uh, I'm going to um, do similar to, um, remember we had that engineering space forward and aft of the actual cargo container, or the container that was on the Eagle. Um, so we're going to do something similar here, but I want to get this top and the bottom. Obviously I only need to make one of these tractors. Um, so, uh, in, in our case here, um, you know, we could have a third module, which I'll build later, uh, which would be basically a habitation module. So it would be truly the shake and bake colony. It would have everything you'd need in it, oxygen, uh, a small refinery probably, uh, could even be a big refinery because a refinery is, is, uh, two by two by four. Um, so you could actually, I could have a refinery in one end. I mean, how, how big of a, of a temporary living space do you really need? Um, of course, if you put the modules on the back, now it's a 2x2x2 uh, a two by two by two or 2x2x3. Two by two by uh, so, yeah. Okay, so I'm um, going to put these here. Um, I want to... Um, uh, I'm going to be kind of interesting in how I do this. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Uh, so number four is where my connector was. Uh, I'm going to reverse this connector. Um, so uh, attach that there. And then I go back to my scaffolding here. Uh, which is here. Okay, so there's my base frame. Uh, in fact, we're going to go out one more in front of that because I need that space in between. And then we're going to attach onto here. I'm going to do a 3x3 three three grid. Obviously, you can't do this. Um, uh, and we're going to go out to there. Uh, we're going to destroy that one. And we're going to once again put in my connector. Okay, so this connector in this case is going to uh, be what's connected on to this base part. Okay, so this, this will be the frame ultimately that connects everything in. Now, what can we do up here? Um, to make things a little more interesting. So if you remember the modules here is that we had um, if we remember our picture uh, in fact uh, give me half a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna go off screen for just a moment. Alright. 
keep that one up. Um, but what I want to do, and, and sorry to be working off screen on you, I know that's really rude and boring and all that sort of thing. Um, what I'm trying to do here is get a picture, easy, easy to work with picture. Uh, so I can drag this on and off of the world here. So you can see what we're looking like. Alright, so let me drag this back over here so you can see where we're working. Alright, so here's um, this frame that we're going to work out. Um, and so I'm considering this as engineering area, uh, which is to say power, uh, tanks, uh, production, you know, gaseous production, all that sort of thing, and the same thing back here. Obviously we have tanks and a burner, uh, so these are the actual modules, so I'm going to have, I think, a single large hydrogen back here, uh, maybe more. Uh, so I'm not necessarily going to, you know, totally rape this this design as it is, um, because obviously there are some limitations within space engineers that we're gonna that we're gonna move around. Um, this module obviously is a lot thicker uh, because it's cargo, um, you know. So will this be able to land this particular module onto the ground using its own landing gear? I want to say no it will not. Um, so this is something that I will come down, hover, drop it, disconnect it, put it on the ground, and then the tractor comes up, goes away, and actually sits down on the ground. Now does that mean we won't have a module or something that, that is like this that can be you know underneath it when it lands? Absolutely. We, we have infinite flexibility. Once you have the tractor and the basic design down, you can do pretty much anything you want with it. Uh, in my case, because I'm using these 3x3x3 three by three by three cargo containers, then I have a little less flexibility in the design. Um, in fact, the other one was designed around these cargo modules uh, that were a little bit big. And so it had these great big huge stilty legs that was really kind of strange looking. Um, to the point where it was never really that practical. So that was kind of one of the other things that, uh, that I didn't really care for about it. Um, so, um, given this, then um, we need to figure out exactly uh, how far one way or the other we're going to go with this. Um, so if we look at the side here, we have a block gap, and we can either put half blocks in in the back, but I do not have half blocks in the scaffolding style. Um, so that may be a little bit of a challenge. I'm sure somebody will add on those blocks eventually. Um, Uh, so, what do we need to do? So, I'm going to use this end. Um, do I go vanilla? Do I go something else? Now, here's the other challenge. What I'm thinking about doing, because I want to connect end to end, um, I'm going to do a few kind of crazy things here. Um, so the first crazy thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use a mod uh, that I absolutely love. This is from a group called Prosimian. They are the armored conveyors. Um, so we actually saw some of them uh, on the other ship, uh, that, that large um, uh, machine that we saw that was the the shipyard with the nanite factories and everything I used uh, those exclusively um, so what I want to do is cut this thing in half more or less and uh, so I'm gonna do that uh, so it's a that's a, a right angles uh, we're gonna do the same thing on this end and uh, I'm actually gonna put hydrogen tanks in the middle here now, hydrogen tanks are not conveyors, but they function as conveyors. Okay, so you can actually move cargo through hydrogen tanks if you want to. 
Um, I'm using Kenti hydrogen tanks, so they are based on an oxygen tank model because I have no idea how to model. I've never actually learned. Uh, so ideally it would be to uh, get somebody who knows how to do models and, and create a really cool module model. Um, but I haven't done that. So uh, um, let's see, we're going to go to number two uh, and number eight here, which is, so we have all the different tanks. Uh, in this case, the hydrogen tank OP, uh, which is a great big monster tank, uh, even though it's a 2x2 two two grid. So it says oxygen, but it's actually not an oxygen tank. Um, so what I'm going to do is cut this entire center section out uh, and put hydrogen tanks in here. So I should be able to put three... Oh, darn. Okay, so I'm going to put two tanks and then I have to figure out what I'm going to put here um, Elsewhere container here. Uh, so, okay, this is my forward section. Uh, so let me turn that so it's forward. Uh, seven is my oxygen generator, and we see a super gas generator here. I'm going to rotate that around uh, to be a little more interesting there. And then put that in there. All right, so I've got some engineering up here. I really should, if I were uh, just going to be building something kind of simple, I should just put conveyor through the middle here. That way, if there is any damage or anything uh, that's ultimately taken by this thing, uh, then it would not be happening up here. In fact, having said all that, let me strip all this out uh, and just put in conveyor. Uh, that way I keep all the engineering in the engineering areas. Um, I think that would be better. Little, little, I would do it this way, but I'm kind of using the eagle as a model. Um, so even though I'm not recreating the eagle, um, I kind of want to stay within that style. So let me go back to uh, number four uh, and this one turn this sideways uh, of course this is going to screw my numbers up so when I actually paste uh, more of these uh, in below okay um, so the challenge here uh, is actually that I have to go up and over to connect these connectors in so that is not ideal but it is just the nature of the game. I'm stuck with that. Uh, I can do... Uh, can't do anything else. All right, so we're gonna put the same, uh, you know, angle, 45 degree elbows, uh, into the ends to get um, this back out. Um, I'm gonna cheat a little bit Okay, so I've got another mod here. Um, there's a 45 degree angle. Um, so there's that one and that one. I'm gonna do the same thing at this end. It'll make it look a little sleeker. Is that a word? Sleeker? More sleek? And then I'm going to use an elbow. Okay, so we're basically connecting this in. Okay, so it doesn't look totally hideous, but still a bit practical. So again, not vanilla, but it is what it is. Okay, um, what do we want to do on this end? 
So uh, I'm going to do a three by three, I think. So let me go back out to my scaffolding to give me a basic shape. Okay, so I'm gonna do a three by three. There's my three by three. Why did I choose a three by three? Because um, I have effectively, uh, let me core this thing and uh, we'll kind of go to where we're going here. Um, five, we'll do another one of these, uh, which is now going to point that downwards. Uh, and I'm gonna cut a hole here. Um, now I've got a couple options here. Uh, I'm gonna go into the engineering, but how do I actually hook in all of the uh, the gas and that sort of thing. So how do I do that? Um, do I, um, you know, do an elaborate grid here of, uh, for example, um, uh, so here we have a an edge, right? Okay, so it's basically a a T uh, with one out the backside in this case. So uh, do I do this kind of thing uh, here? Um, so that would be here, here. edges would be this, um, which would be like this, go there, go there, of course I'm on the wrong side, so that's not what I want to stick in there. This one uh, swaps out to be, this is actually a five side, um, which, here's my five sides, all right, and then another five goes right here other than now it is that way. Okay, did I mess that one up? Nope, okay, that's right. Okay, so this is going to look a little bit silly because it's all about the hydrogen. Uh, number two and number eight. So these are all my hydrogen tanks. Uh, now we're going to put in um, nine of these. Nine. And on the back, uh, we are going to put a big hydrogen thruster. right there. Bing. Monster. Okay, and we're going to do a port and starboard uh, oxygen generator. We're going to do that in the back. Um, because. Uh, so this is the forward 
Oh, this is forward. Forward. So uh, we're going to nuke that because that does not belong there. Um, so this is forward starboard. I'm going to go ahead and name these as I go. Um, I'm going to call this a gas generator. Uh, I no longer feel that the oxygen generators, which they are called, uh, are an appropriate uh, name. Uh, they are a gas generator. So this is uh, uh, forward uh, starboard. This is, of course, total OCD stuff here. Um, forward 01. Um, uh, what I'm doing here is, of course, I copied that uh, and uh, I'm literally click, put the cursor in the box, control A, control V to paste, and that's number three. AV number four, AV number five, and then AV number six. Okay, so these are forward tanks. Um, so uh, in this case, uh, tanks uh, hydrogen. Okay, I don't need to do anything fancy in the group. Um, Oops, okay, I totally screwed up here. Um, so this is actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How do we have seven? Two, three, four. Oh, because of the center. There's nine minus two is seven. Oh, never mind. I'm, I'm just being stupid. I had to visualize that in my mouth, in my mind. Uh, forward uh, 06. Alright, so really um, so select all if you want to add something into a group. So for example, uh, 6 is the one that's missing. You can see the groups here. I'm going to select 6 that Control, select my group that I want to add that into, and you're going to see them highlight. Bing! They're all highlighted, and do a save. And then you will have added six into the group. So now if I go out of this, okay, select something else, and then reselect the group, you'll see that six is now part of the group. Now what do I want to do with this group? Uh, I don't need them on the toolbar. In fact, I don't want them on the toolbar. They'll just be cluttering things up because you can't do anything with them anyway. Yes, you can fill up tanks inside of tanks. Do you normally do that? No. You're, you're normally only going to do that in a gas generator. So I'm going to do inventory screen off and terminal off. I'm only going to deal with these in terms of the group. Gas generators. Do I need to do anything there? I'm going to leave those there for now because. Okay. Okay. So I can still access these things via here. So I'm going to turn sideways. Uh, I'm going to go down into here. And I'm going to name these. This is my connector 2. So this is my forward tractor. 
which means the other one is the aft aft tractor. Now we can call this really anything we want, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and call that the tractor for now. Uh, this is connectors um, tractor module. Okay, so this is what is being used on the tractor to connect the module. Okay, so all the other connectors, which there will be some uh, on these modules, will be separate from these. All right, so save, which creates the group. There's the group uh, in there. Okay, so turn it off on the toolbar. Uh, those are always going to be functioning as a pair. I don't want to just turn one off because if I just turn one off, it's not going to do anything, right? So uh, there is an inventory capability, so I'll go ahead and leave that on there and then turn that off. Okay, so off it goes. Back out of here. All right, so there is my basic frame for the forward. So I kind of uh, got myself in a little bit of a tizzy there. Um, okay, so we'll do the same kind of a thing back aft. So there really is a method to the Mandis here. Um, and I may actually do a bit more in terms of uh, making this a bit wider. Um, but I'll, uh, we'll, we'll play with that in just a moment here. All right, so um, what are we wanting to do? We want to do a similar thing. So let's start by, um, how did we do this? Let's have a look, see forward. All right, we actually changed completely away from our framing. Uh, and that's not entirely true. Uh, it is, but it isn't. Because um, we're actually going to add framing on the outside of this to make it a little more uh, copacetic to what we want. Oops, I'm out of power. Thankfully, you do not die when you're out of power anymore. They changed that quite a while ago. I think that was like 76, 176 or something like that. Um, all right, so let me get some power back in here. Oh my, I've been going way over, uh, which I apologize for. I, I like to give these about an hour. So this is a great breaking moment when I'm out of power anyway. So let's go ahead and uh, call it quits here and then we'll continue uh, in the next module of the series. So this is Kenty Tiger signing off and we will see you next time.